Welcome back to the Builder's Block, uh, where we talk about how people build and create. Tonight, my guest is Alonzo Rogers. What's up, man? What's going on, man? Um, Alonzo's also a member of the Good Guy Collective. We've had a couple Good Guy Collective members on here. So, also, Alonzo is one of the greatest singers I've heard personally in real life, to Thank be you. honest with you. Thank so, um, how did you get into singing, man? Um, man, I got into singing. I got into singing basically from church. It, was, it started at church, bro. Um, uh, my pops, he's a pastor, excellent singer. And uh, I really just got all of my stuff from him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, we was in church choirs. I was in like elementary school choirs, I was in middle school choirs, um, high school choir. And uh, a little bit after I graduated, maybe maybe just before, I think just before, um, I started dabbling with uh, my guy Xavier. Also met him at the church, lifelong friend, brother. Um, he had gotten into uh, he had gotten into some I think it was jazz band or something like that at Austin East. Uh, so I started hanging around a couple of his friends. <clears throat> we. Uh, kind of formed a group called Adagio's Whisper. Adagio's Whisper was, um, Adagio is a tempo. It's like mm -hmm. a slow tempo that you can keep a rhythm to. Um, so we just kind of named it after that. And we did instrumental music for the school, different programs and uh, church functions and things like that. That led to me, um, well, first of all, let me, Rewind a little bit. Yeah. Because of my choral experience, I got into playing music as well. Uh, at church, I started off at the drums, and then uh, a, a church member brought me a bass guitar. That's how I got into Adagio's Whisper, because I was the bassist for them, you know? So okay. I didn't really use much of my vocals there. But outside of school, once, once I graduated, I um, got into this group called Peaceful Harmony, which was a gospel group that my man Zay uh, was a part of. Um, not just Zay though, we had a couple different talented musicians that were in there. My boy Taylor Warren, he was my drummer. Um, my guy Tarek on the keys. Um, I had a, a hell of a guitarist. Um, Brandon, man. Uh, we, all, we all came together and formed uh, also vocals, on the vocals, uh, Chelsea. Chelsea Tyresha, she kind of pieced everything together because she knew everybody. Um, but yeah, we, we made what's called Peaceful Harmony. We did primarily gospel music. Um, and that kind of led over into us doing, uh, creating a new group called Collision. Same people, we just played a different style of music. It was more so secular. So we did a lot of jazz. Um, we did R&B, plenty of R&B. And we did stuff like Christmas parties and birthday parties and family reunions. And uh, that paid a little bit better too. So that's why we kind of slid over in that, into that area. But as Collision and Peaceful Harmony, that's where I exercised my vocals, you know, and um, it was a thrill. It was a thrill, man. Um, it was it was just, that was, that was one of the times where I felt the most connected and in unison with a crew on stage live, man. It was just beautiful. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Collision was my heart, man. Um, and we kind of broke up, but I, I did bass and vocals there. Sometimes I would do drums. We would all kind of swap out because we were all multi-talented. So that was that was ill. But we called it collision because everybody just collided together. Yeah, it was dope. It was beautiful, man. I miss those days. But yeah, that's that's how I started singing though. Um, so it started from the church, and then how how did the transition go from the church to secular? Well, uh, really, like I said, it was straight up. The band uh, going from peaceful harmony to collision. Uh, it was it was it was we were we were doing church gigs. We were getting paid, but when you deal with some people, it's like they tell you one price and then you get there, it's a whole nother. That happened to us quite a few times on the church end of things. We started uh, getting offers from. Certain people locally in Knoxville, J Live, things like people like that, and they were like, "Hey, you want to come perform here at this ball or at this party?" And we got into that. That started paying, 
And we had more and more of those gigs. So it was just like, let's just drop Peaceful Harmony and do Collision. It made more sense to do that because we were getting more money doing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> doing so that. do you think there's a, there is a difference in the way gospel music is monetized versus secular music? Do you think there's more of a market for it? Yeah. Yeah. I think there is uh, more of a market for secular music, man. Uh, people are just more willing to, I think, sit down and listen, man. Um, gospel, uh, not everybody wants to hear that message all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful message. I love, I love, I love gospel. I'm not ashamed of where I come from. My roots are firm in the church, but, I, um, just business wise, man, we was just, we was, it was, it was five or six, five or six, maybe even seven of us at times because we had multiple singers in the group coming in and out. Uh, and then we had pieces like uh, saxophones, uh, trumpets. Uh, we had drummers, guitarists, and it was just like everybody was trying to eat. Everybody was trying to get some little change in their pocket, right? Yeah. So it was just more beneficial to do some secular music. So that's what we that's what we did with. That's what we rode along. Nice. Um, as far as like for you personally, yeah. was there a difference between? what gospel music, singing gospel music did for you internally versus perhaps the money that came from secular music? No. I mean, well, are you, are you asking? I'm a, I guess I'm asking is, is there, does one do one thing specific for your soul? Is there a difference that gospel music provides for you? No, not really. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I feel like, uh, the same, <clears throat> the same effect comes from music, you know, whether it's gospel or R and B. You got a feeling, you got a vibe. It makes you want to get up and dance and shout, you know, uh, and maybe not shouting hallelujah, shout, but you yeah. might be wanting to do a toe tap or two, mm -hmm. you know. And I feel like it does the same thing regardless. My talents come from God regardless. Mm -hmm. He loves me. He knows my plan. And he knows what he has for me. You know, people are offering me things. And I'm not turning them down. <laughs> and uh, uh, bad things aren't coming from me turning, uh, uh, turn, uh, accepting those gigs and things like that. So I feel like I'm on the right path. Yeah. You know, yeah. so regardless, whether it's secular, whether it's gospel, I'll do the gig because... All my talents came from God. I ain't, I ain't, you know, it's, it's one way or another. It's gonna get the same job done. Yeah, music is definitely um, an experiential phenomenon. It seems like, and um, people, I think that really gravitate towards music, feel that on a spiritual level, whether they're really aware of that or not. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was pretty cool what you were saying about like it'll make you move. Yeah. You know, it's gonna make you move. It's gonna. Uh, somebody told me music affects the passions by sound. You know, mm. no matter what kind of music it is, it's gonna affect you. You know, but um, at the same time, with what I with what I stick to, my R and B, my gospel, um, it's the same result. Same result comes from the, and it all comes from the heart. Yeah, that's true, man. Every time I sing. So, um, how did you get involved with the Good Guy Collective? Okay, okay. So, with the Good Guy Collective, um, my man Xavier, again, the guy who kind of held Peaceful Harmony and Collision together. Shout it out to you. Um, my brother, <clears throat> he was connected with Jay Bush some kind of way. I guess he had done tracks for Jay Bush previously. Um, and he called me one day and said, hey, you want to come to the studio? Uh, Jay Bush said he needs somebody. And I'm like, okay. Uh, he gives me Jay Bush number. He said, yo, uh, I got a rapper here at the studio. I think his name was Benny out of Oak Ridge. Uh, Benny needed somebody to sing a chorus, and I showed up to the studio. Uh, my first time ever in a in a actual studio like I've been in ho home studios before but this is like a location that's not attached to somebody's living quarters 
So right. yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is my first time. That's what I call the studio. It's like anything that's not attached to somebody's living quarters. Is, you know, but I guess a home studio could be a studio still. My mentality. Mm -hmm. But um, I get there, and he's like, yo, he needs a hook. I listen to the song. Uh, psh, I can't even think of what it was called. But I sung it. My man was like, damn. You know what? That sounds so good. I don't even know what to do with this, man. You want the beat? I was like, yeah. And he paid me for the song and gave me the beat on top of that because he didn't know what to do with it. So I thought that was dope. From there, it went from, you know, Jay Bush saying, hey, somebody needs something from you, you know, and him tapping me in as a, as a singer because he didn't know no other singers or uh, felt like I was good for the track to, yo, I need you on my stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. So I get over there with Jay Bush. I think uh, we did Power Ups, one of the songs on Power Ups, and it just kept going from there. Bush got me on to, I think it was Black Atticus, uh, one of his tracks, uh, Same Change, mm -hmm. um, which Xavier was on, my boy Zay, that I'm talking about. Uh, and it's just it's just been that man. I, I get on a track with Bush, and everybody's like, "Oh, you're Alonzo, yeah," because they know Bush. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 where it's that's where it's been, man. Uh, Good Guy Collective. It went from Bush to Black Atticus. Now I'm working with Lane. Uh, I got two songs that I did with Lane recently. Uh, Body in the Blood, which was dope. I think that was produced by Will Made It. Yes, I think that's correct. Beats by Beats by Make or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's what night. That was a whole different. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> he talked about him in our last podcast. He talked yeah. about Body in the Blood too. Yeah, so it was Body in the Blood, and then I did another song with him, No Man's Land, which was ill. That's the that was the first time I got to play with Auto Tune. Lit. Oh, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's the one, it. And Samaj is on that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that track's good, man. Um, yeah, I've got an album that I'm working on right now too so i might be uh hitting you up about man, that as please, well please um I, I love i love featuring on people's stuff man yeah man like especially rap songs i love rap i'm a huge hip-hop fan and uh getting on there bless you getting on <laughs> getting on uh to somebody else's track man with all that energy y'all already got on there man i just i just love being able to tag along because mm -hmm. really it's, it's y'all song it's you know your track and i'm just I'm here to help out in any capacity that I can. And then when I help out, y'all always like, oh, Lonzo, old man, he just came through and blessed us. And I was like, no. Yeah. Man, no, I'm just here, man. I'm just here to be used. Please, whenever you're ready, holla at me. I think that's the cool thing about the collective. We all um, serve each other with our skill sets, yeah. I think. And I think that's really, really dope. Um I think I met you the first time when we did the Power Ups show because I dropped levels and then you had been working with Bush and that was the first time I ever saw you perform. Yeah. And that, I loved, that was my favorite song was, uh, on his album was Your Love. Yeah. Oh, oh you, it was, a, yeah. I don't get that often. Really? That's what's up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that one and there was another one that was really chill on that album. Um I can't remember what it was called now off the top of my head, but we had quite a few songs on that. On that, it was like your love and oh, it's um glow, 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 glow. yeah, that song. And it was crazy, man. That whole summer, those were the two songs off that album that bounced back and forth between my favorite. And um, yeah, man, that was great, dude. What was it like going from? performing gospel and then R&B and then singing for a hip hop track, not just on an album, but live. What was that like? Because I'll go so as far, I'll go as far as to say, I think you might be the most crowd favorite right now. <laughs> and I say that because I've heard people say that it's like when we finish a good guy show, people are always talking about you, man. So like what, What's it like to go from, yeah, doing gospel and R&B to singing on some hip-hop tracks? Um, as far as performing live, I'd say there's not much of a difference, man. Um, singing, singing with choirs, 
having solos and duets and things like that, uh, solo parts. That kind of prepped me for getting ready to, to perform with Good Guy. Yeah. You know, going from church to church on Sundays, uh, <clears throat> conventions, which last like a week, you know, uh, performing with the gospel choir at Austin East on Sundays uh, after I've already gotten out of my own church service. I'm traveling with the, with the choir from school to go meet up at a different church. I mean, man, it's, it's always going to be a crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've done plays, many, many plays, like in school and in church and stuff like that. So I just, it's just kind of everything kind of groomed me for what I'm doing now. So performing's kind of in your nature. I guess you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could say that, you know, as I'm trying to, you know, from a humble point of view, it did perform me from, I mean, it did prepare me for what I'm doing now. Yeah, man. Um, so what about any solo album from you? Is there anything like that? Maybe, uh, coming down the line? A solo album? Um, yeah, I think, I think we could do an EP. I think we could squeeze an EP yeah. out there. Like I really thrive off, again, I really thrive off of featuring, helping out. You know what I'm saying? Like if I could be Knoxville's Nate Dog, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's the king of hooks, right? If mm -hmm. I could be Knoxville's Nate Dog, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> yeah, get me on a hook. You know what I'm saying? I, I I love doing stuff like that. But um, yeah, I do have I do have a couple of a couple of uh, singles. I got a couple of tracks that I've played with and just toyed with. Uh, some of them I'm taking seriously. Um, not so much others, but I am more than willing to release them when I feel like they're complete, so that people can enjoy them just as much as I did because, you know, obviously if, if you're making it, you enjoy it some type of way, right? You know, um, so, you know, I want, I want people to enjoy what I enjoyed at some point, and I'll, I'll, I'll release that. Um, right now it's no, no time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, however, <clears throat> however, uh, I have released jingles as well as, as, well as actual uh, songs like, for, for artists, so uh -huh. I've worked with, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of the Two Brothers podcast. Um, I haven't, no. Uh, Trevor Jackson and uh, Troy, I can't think of his last name, but uh, I think they're from Knoxville. One of them lives in Charlotte, one of them lives in Nashville. They heard me through Jay Bush, and they were like, hey, can you do a jingle for us? I was like, ah, I was stoked, man. And so... Uh, I did that. I did that, and I enjoy doing it. And then more recently, um, me and my guy CT, my co-host for um, Hangar Management, mm -hmm. he did. Uh, he and I, he and I completed a jingle for one of the food trucks, or not food trucks, but one of the um, one of the restaurants that we interviewed. Oh uh, man, nice! In Hangar Management, so uh, we did a jingle for him, and. That's gonna be that's gonna be awesome, man. We love doing it. Uh, I've always been a bit, been a big fan of the Jamie Foxx show. Jamie Foxx had the dream job of working jingles, even though mm -hmm. he made it look tough sometimes. But I've always slick wanted to do that, man. Like just just a quick little 30, 45 seconds. I've always wanted to, you know, yeah, deliver a nice little jingle that gets the point across and get paid for it. Yeah, because I love to sing. I love music. I can be a musician. I am a musician uh, as well. But I can play bass if I need to and. You know, uh, that's kind of what the, the elements that I, I threw into uh, the jingle that, that we made this past week, man. Uh, I, I brought out the bass. It was like the first time since Collision had, had died. And, um, bro, I mean, it was like, psh, I think it's been about eight years since I picked up a bass. It felt really good, though. I picked it up, and uh, we knocked out this jingle. Y'all y'all going to be hearing about it soon. It's, it's going to be cool, man. Nice, man. Yeah, so that's that's I'm excited awesome. About that, and I, I'm, I'm definitely open to doing more of that. Cool. Yeah. So this new stuff is it R and B or is this like hip hop? Are you making the beats or are you like? Well, you don't have to give it all away. But okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I got I got one song that I um, that I pieced together myself. 
Um, I created it from scratch. I was like, I think I was working at Burger King or something like that. And I had a moment where I couldn't get a tune, a, mel a melody out of my head. So I had went to like the freezer and recorded it on my little Kia Sera flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> I recorded the voice memo. Um, and I think I, I, had, I had sent it to myself in an email and found it like maybe like three years ago, three, four years ago. Sent it to my boy Zay, and Zay made a beat for it. Um, I'm drawing a blank right now. What's the name of the song? It's called Putting In Work. Mm. And the song was talking about basically um, how I had dropped the ball in a relationship. And I was just thinking to myself, hypothetically, if this woman ever gave me a chance, this time I'm putting in work. And that's the chorus. This time I'm putting in work. Yeah, 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 yeah. This time I'm putting in work. And so um, Zay made a beat for that. That was beautiful. Uh, and it just hasn't been completed. Like, I I, I dropped the ball. I dropped the ball. Um, but I'm slowly picking it back up again, man. Uh, I've, been, I've been in and out of the studio with a couple of friends working on some other things. I got another track that I'm working on called Sunrise. And um it features one of my one of my close friends, James. I call him Apex. Um James Anderson. Uh and and he he laid down a dope freestyle, but I laid the chorus down afterwards because I was hearing something uh while he was freestyling. And uh we got to we got to just go back and and make sure everything's right and fitting. Uh, but I am still working on that. I'm looking for a female vocalist to to duet with me on that one. Um, so Sunrise is going to be awesome. It's, it's talking about waking up next to the love of your life while the sun rises. It's painting a beautiful picture. Mm, nice, man. Yeah. I want to wake up in the sunrise to your eyes right beside you. That's that's what I'm saying in the song. So we got that. Um, as far as the beats go, though, um, the beat for that one came from this guy I found on YouTube. I think one of the other artists in the Good Guy Collective uh, uses a lot of his beats. I think it's Bush. And, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm going to buy that beat from that guy. Uh, hopefully I can if nobody's bought it completely you know so. nice we won't say who that is so yeah i'm not gonna do that yeah yeah uh, um mm -mm. so we got that and then i bought a beat from one of my other guys one of my close friends jay shine uh his 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 producer name is jay tovin j-a-i-t-o-v like jay tovin yeah nice uh jay tovin <laughs> is a hell of a producer man this boy is cooking up some fire man um but I bought like three beats from him. He's 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 putting together lots of good deals on Beatstar, and uh, I bought a couple beats from that guy, and I'm working on those now. I'm working on those right now, man. Um, so I don't have any names for any for for any of the tracks that I'm working on. It'll come to me eventually, but um, yeah, there's not a whole lot that I'm working on by myself. Uh, again, I just I just really get a kick off. Um, featuring and helping other folks out like uh aside from bush and aside from black atticus um i did a song two songs with with mr mac uh, oh yeah he's from maryville right alcoa yeah. blunt county yeah 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 um we got a song coming out called i choose you and uh i did a song with him and Jesse James. Are you familiar with uh, Jesse James? No, I'm not. Another local artist. Hmm. Um, man, I cooked up some fire with them. Uh, it's, a, it's a song called Gorilla Shit. <laughs> 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 but it's gonna be it's gonna be good, man. I, I hope they release the release these tracks pretty soon, man. Uh, I feel like they're awesome tracks, and they need to be heard ASAP. Yeah. Did uh did Doink make those beats? Yeah, Doink made the. I no, it's a high school him, right? No. Yeah, man. It's okay. Alcoa. Yeah. yeah. Doink is Dominic cool, Woods. man. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, he was he was like I think he was a grade behind me, like one or two grades behind yeah. me. Yeah. Man, he is he is a dope producer. Yeah. I love how he remade the beat. The beat that um he remade was uh I Choose You by Willie Hutch. Mm. And basically that song is more famous these days for the um it was being it was it was sampled in uh the UGK the UGK yeah, yeah. The players anthem national players mm-hmm. anthem and so uh he he remade it from scratch you know so i guess that way it wouldn't be a sample yeah um and man he did his thing he did his thing man added a little Knoxville twang on that thing and uh it sounds good he had uh Lauren Arp sing on the track i never met her before but she's a talented artist very talented artist, and uh, she got on there and she did her thing. And I think it's I think it's me, her, and Mac that are supposed to be on the track. I'm not sure if Mac has laid his verse down yet, but nice. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to that release, man. Cool, so. man. So I asked uh, Lane about this also. I was maybe going to get your take on it. So I'd also interviewed Kobe and Bush about it. Uh, did you read that article about the Knoxville hip hop scene? No, the, the guys were a little. Uh, no, perturbed but I, <laughs> about. Um, so the 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 main focus of the article is that um, the hip hop scene or community in Knoxville is facing hitting a glass ceiling. Like, how do you feel about that from your experience um, as an artist? Hitting a glass ceiling. Yeah, like like you hit a certain level and you kind of, and then that's it. You know, so the, so the news is saying that that's that's what's going on in Knoxville. Is that yeah, right? that you know you're not going to make it out of Knoxville, basically. And what is making it really? You know, like yeah. I think that's subjective, or it's an individual thing for each and every body mm-hmm. who is a musician. If you find fulfillment doing what you're doing, then that's making it to me. Yeah. But I don't know. What, like, uh, do you have any take on that? Like, yeah, I guess it, I guess it really does depend on what your definition of making it is, mm-hmm. you know, uh, to me, making it is, is your name in the lights. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, I would like to make it to that point. But, um, I think I heard Lane speak on that and he was like, he was more so like, you know, uh, you you don't have to you don't have to make that your main goal, if you're not having fun with it, which I'm loving every bit of what I do. Uh, if you're not having fun with it, then basically you might not make it. Is that is, is that what Lane was saying in, in his? In his in yeah, his or maybe movie? kind of the idea that money can't buy happiness. Okay. You know, or okay. or what well. I would say is like money can't buy fulfillment because there's a difference. Happiness is temporary. Yeah, fulfillment is like that long burning coal yeah you know what i'm saying um, um i don't i don't i don't think that there's a glass ceiling here in knoxville uh if that article was saying that then that's whack um knoxville has a lot of potential and i feel like sooner or later somebody's gonna break that mold you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um and i don't care who it is i love knoxville i want it to be on the map i want it to, to to blow up for what it is, man. It's it's a beautiful place. We got beautiful people here, talented, talented, talented people here. And Knoxville could be just as big of a music scene as Nashville or as Atlanta. Absolutely. I don't know what it is that's, that the new Sentinel feels like is, is holding us back, but it's gonna be overcome. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, real soon. I have a feeling that, that and it's probably gonna come from somebody in the Good Guy Collective. That's I what I so feel too, like, man. like especially like as as hot as Lane is, as hot as Lane is, bro. What is what does this TikTok video do like four fourteen million spins or something like that? <sighs> something like that, bro. That's I don't know how many. I don't exactly, know anybody else in Knoxville that did that many lot. TikTok spins. That's 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 a lot mm-hmm. off of what uh, calling all cars. Mm-hmm. I think it's just the right exposure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The timing, us doing our, our mathematics, our, our our research and figuring out when's a good time to post what, how can we strategically, you know, saying overcome whatever glass ceiling Knoxville thinks it has on us. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we, 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 
we got the juice. We got the pieces. We just need to put it all together, man. I mean, it's, I don't know, man. I, I, feel, like, I feel like it shouldn't be this hard. Um, mm-hmm. it, it shouldn't have taken so long for Knoxville to blow up. And it, once it does, it's, it's like, everybody's going to be like, dang. All those people just like, oh, I got to leave Knoxville in order to make it. I, I, I can't stand that type of stuff. They going to yeah. come back. I moved to Nashville and came back to Knoxville. Yeah. And this wasn't like the main reason I did it, but at one point I came back to one of the flight school shows at the Birdhouse. Okay. This is before I was in the Good Guy Collective. Mm-hmm. And I was just so overcome with joy because there it seemed like there was finally a community of hip-hop artists in Knoxville working together, together because when I left... Um, it was really just me and Wigs as far as DJs go. Mm-hmm. And like I had DJed for Lane a couple times and for Atticus a couple times. And, and Wigs was doing that too. But it wasn't really anything beyond that. I didn't, I, I knew Kobe in passing. I got you. I'd never met Jarius. Mm-hmm. And then I come back to this show and they had put in all this work together and built this community. And I was like, man, yeah. there's nothing like that in Nashville. Really? Nothing. No. Like it's 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 more corporate. Okay. It's more and and they take things seriously on a different level. Mm-hmm. Um, but in my opinion and experience, the community vibe just wasn't there. Okay. And I think that's where we thrive, and I think that's a better story that could have been told mm-hmm. by the new Sentinel is is the community that came together to create a scene. So yeah. it's like. The glass ceiling is is irrelevant, you know, because no they're putting the ceiling there. We're not putting it there. No, yeah. We're not looking yeah. up for it, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, man. So yeah, I just I just wanted to get your take on that, man, because yeah. I was gonna get anyone in the collective, you know, that I interview, you know, or have on the podcast. I'll probably bring that up just to kind of yeah. get you know other perspectives on I mean, it. That's, that's bogus. Yeah. That's bogus. <laughs> And uh, I wish we could get somebody else that's going to that's gonna write more so the story we deserve, you know? Yeah, I think that's what I really liked about what Atticus said. Um, he said, I'm sick and my crew is sick of what the media not celebrating our wins. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They focus and more so on the losses. Yeah, yeah, like second bell was great. Right. You know, we had so many great takeaways from that, but. Second bell was awesome, man. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed every moment of it. Even when the power went out on us. Yeah, like know. three. How many times? Yeah, I don't I remember. I think it was like three times, man. That was bogus, bro. But I still had fun with y'all, man. That was a, uh, the first of many more experiences that we'll have on a stage like that, bro. That was oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. Oh, yeah, man. I loved – I think another one of the first times I worked with you was when we did that commercial for – Power ups. You remember that? Oh, where we were you and we were Bush playing, playing Mortal Kombat? <laughs> we were playing the video game, right? Yeah, that was <laughs> God, that was so much fun. That was that a was, great that was the summer I moved back from okay. Nashville. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That was I forgot all about that. That was fun, man. It was. Bro, it was dope. I had a lot of fun working on the power work uh power ups album with Bush. Yeah, man. Um, man, I had the privilege of being on like uh, like five of the songs on there, five or six of those. Yeah, man. Like background vocals, all that. Like I was, even and lead vocals as well. It was it was just a lot of fun, P- coming back to the studio, uh, and just watching him doing what he's doing. Even though I don't understand half of it, I don't know how the engineering producing stuff works, man. He got all these bars with squiggly lines, and then you got all these knobs and stuff, yeah, bro. He's That's, a wizard with that, man. <sighs> He be doing it though. Mm-hmm. He be doing it though, and I mean, just even those times I had fun, and even those times where he's sitting down discussing to me an idea that he got about a song, and I'm like, I. <laughs> he's like, no, nah, man, we it's gonna work. It's gonna work. So, all right, let's do it. Let's try mm-hmm. it. I'm like cash out money. I I was like, man, bro. That he shit came was over. Great. He came over. He was like, bro. We got to come up with a jingle for Cash App, something to where 
it's going to get stuck in everybody's heads, and they're going to send us money off the song. I'm like, what? <laughs> they're going to send us money off the song. I'm thinking like, okay, if we sell a jingle, we're going to get... No, nah, he's talking about having people listen to the song, and they are so touched by the song that, you know what, let me send them $10, you know? Yeah. And that actually happened. That actually happened. Like, he came over, talked to me about the song. I was like, I. Right. Whenever you need me at the studio, I'm there. When we get in there, I hear the beat. But before before we left the house, when he brought the idea to me, initially I was like, all right, but he had persuaded me that day. It was like, it was like, okay, I see where this dude's going. He's a genius. All right, I'm gonna follow him, man. He's Knoxville's Kanye. I'm gonna <laughs> 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 No, I was just playing. But yeah, man, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna follow him, man. We got in the studio and knocked that thing out. And he said he wanted to do a video for it, man. Oh, my gosh. That was so much fun, bro. That was so much fun. Yeah, that video was, was a blast. Golly, being in the in the, in the the Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> people were like, oh, are you shooting? Oh. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I thought people would be more put off by that, but it seemed like everyone was really respectable and yeah. like just interested in what we were doing. Mm -hmm. That was really fun. That was awesome, man. <laughs> Having my friend, having my boy AJ in there. Yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> he like fun. went up in his ear. Yeah, he was like, oh. <laughs> that was fun, man. Yeah, man. That was awesome. Um, did you, did you, you did the peanut butter video too, right? Yeah, no peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah, that video, that song's great. That's a great track. I love it. I love it. That's, that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely, it's definitely like my top five, one of my top five favorite songs I did with Bush. Um, and uh, I, I love the concept of the video. love how it started all the way to how it ended, man. You did a hell of a job, bro. Thank you. You did a hell of a job on that video, man. A lot of compliments. When that thing first came out, especially millions and millions of compliments, bro. It was like, dang, who shot that, man? What kind nice. of camera he used? I'm like, I don't know, man. You got <laughs> to ask Modify. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Ask me, I'm still shooting music videos. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, dope, man. Um, anything else you got coming down the line I need to know about that the people need to know about, man, well, before yeah, we sign off? Of course, man. Um, we got, first of all, let me, a little bit about hangar management. You yeah, know, okay, so explain hangar management because yeah. we're going to have a podcast in the future, the near future. With hangar management, I just wanted to get you on here first. Okay, and well, this would be a good lead in to sure. that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, hangar management. I am. I am one third of hangar management. Hangar management is. Have you ever been hangry before? Uh, yeah, I'm a Taurus man, so I get hangry all the time. Ta da! <laughs> well, we're here to help you manage your hangar. Mm, okay? okay. So we show you where the good stuff is so that you can be a more likable and lovable individual. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Cause nobody likes I a need that individual. in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's, um, right now we're focused on East Tennessee. We go to different food trucks and restaurants and just, you know, if, if, if you're set up under a tent selling plates, we'll pull up on you and we basically introduce our people to you mm -hmm. and you know you drop your backstory let us know where you come from what you got going on what type of business you running and uh my man ct he'll ask you more so about business i ask more so about you know food because i got a culinary background you know what i'm saying i've cooked in quite a few restaurants and um spent I have a huge passion for cooking, so mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm asking them about the food, and then we eventually try the food and tell you how we like it, tell you what's up with the spot, you know? So, um, yeah, man, that's that's been going. It's been alive since uh, Mother's Day this year. That was our first episode we shot with the Mac food truck. Um, and, yeah, that's 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 – how we get down, man. Me and my man CT. Uh, CT is my co-host, and then the third guy is uh, Alan. My man Alan. He's he's behind the camera. He's our videographer, editor, producer, all that other stuff. Me and CT just sit in front of the camera, crack jokes, and eat food. So uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's, that's my passion, bro. That's my passion. That's uh, being in front of the camera. 
talking about food, cracking jokes with my brother. Man. It's great it's, content. I've enjoyed every one that I've watched. And excellent. shout out to Alan, did you say? Alan. Um, Alan. Because I'm, I'm a videographer yeah. and sound engineer. And like I, th I think the picture quality and the actual media product that you're making is really good. It Bro. look it looks dope. Man. And and he then you've got beast. like the good on camera skills too. So I, yeah. I enjoy it because I'm a foodie. So I appreciate it's it. It's right up my alley. Please continue. And I've to shared watch. that with so many of my friends. So Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Uh but yeah, my man A Boogie. Shout out to Boogie. A Boogie. Uh and shout out to my man C T. <laughs> um, a boogie man, he, he is a beast, you know, with the editing and uh, golly, to watch where we came from, bro, from the episode one all the way up to now, watching how he's added and uh, stuff that he's taken away, and just like the music, the transitions, all of that stuff is just beautiful, man. To see that guy growing like that, but um, yeah, hanger management that's that's my baby right there. We got T-shirts available, $25 a piece. Got them in gray, black, and white. Just let me know. Holla at your boy. Um, yeah, link will be in the description. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. Um, I'm, I'm, we try to do that like every other week, every two weeks. Um, aside from that, I'm looking at starting up a comedy sketch YouTube channel. Let me know, man. Let me know. I've got some characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would if 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 you don't have someone lined up to shoot, maybe hit me up. I I would like to contribute. Hey, because like I'm down. I I do started this. doing sketches before I ever went to video school. Yeah. Like that's what I started. Doing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, right. me and my friend Jeff Maynard. Okay. But uh, yeah, man. I've That's never, exciting. I've never, I've never actually done a sketch. I've got plenty of ideas. You do, man, because we talked about ideas. it at Vienna that one time. Right, Remember that? right. When we sat down at the bar, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I got plenty of ideas for this thing, man, and, and they just keep growing because a lot of them come from just life. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. Everyday life. I'm just sitting down with the guys, and something will happen. I'll be like, man. That shit would be funny as a skit, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I go into my iPhone or go into my little notepad and put it down. So we got a lot of stuff coming up, but um, I'm definitely down to shoot with you, bro. I got Cool, a, man. I got an idea. Yeah, um, I mean, and I mean, Alan's dope, too. Man. Don't let me take anything away from him. Yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. just saying, like, I would love to collaborate with you on something like that For in sure. some shape or form. Bro. Absolutely, you know. let's do it. Let's so, do it, man. I need even if it's not I need. that I need show. A, it can I be need something. another cameraman because Alan be busy, man. Alan be <laughs> Boogie be busy. I mean, he's good. You know, I can see why he'd be busy. <laughs> you guys have really good looking stuff, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you, man. And you can come out and eat with us anytime. I would love to be a guest. Yeah. Come out there, bro. Man. Come out there. Too. We'll do a swap off. You you got me on the episode of Builder's Block. I'll yeah. Get you on the episode of Hanger Management, mm, bro. I like the sound of that. I'd love to have your take on some on some nice dishes, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure, man. For sure. Yeah. Well, all right, man. Um, I think that wraps this up, this episode of Builder's Block. For sure. Alonzo, thank you so much for coming out. And I'm definitely gonna have Hanger management on in the very near future because we need to get that lined up for sure. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me, bro. I really yeah. do appreciate the opportunity. When you hit me up, I was like, me? <laughs> <laughs> me? Really? Yeah, man. Like I said, dude, you're the one that everyone's all like, <gasps> who's that vocalist man. after these live shows? Yo, if y'all need some vocals on any track, holler at me. Yeah. Hit your boy up. I'm, I'm more than down to work. Like I said, that's where I get my kicks is helping people out. So yeah, man. always been that way, and it's never going to change. Thank you again, bro. Yes, you're welcome. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir.